Hello and welcome to another Roblox scripting tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make an obby. This is going to be a three episode long series and in this first episode we are going to be setting up the obby and profile service for data saving. The first thing I'm going to do in the workspace is the spawn location. I'm going to change the size from 12, 1, 12 to 6, 1, 6. The base plate I'm going to delete the texture inside of it, and I'm going to set the locked property to false, if I can find it. I'm going to set locked to false, and I'm going to set the size to 24, 2, 24. In the spawn location, I'm going to move down until it's even. Then the base plate, I'm going to change the color to bright green. The spawn location, I'm going to use a plugin. It's called Reclass. I'm going to convert it from a spawn location to a part, so it's no longer an actual spawn location. Then I'm going to add a folder, and I'm going to name this folder Checkpoints. Then I'm going to duplicate the folder with Control D, it's Command D on a Mac, and I'm going to rename it to Checkpoint Bases. I'm going to drag the base plate into the checkpoint bases folder. I'm going to rename the spawn location to just one, and I'm going to put it inside of the checkpoints folder. I'm going to change the color of it to bright red, but you can choose whatever you want. Same with the checkpoint base. Inside of the base plate, so the checkpoint base, I'm going to add an object called a selection box. I'm going to set the Adorni property to the base plate. So then it adds a box around it to make it look really nice. I'm going to change the line thickness to 0.1, and I'm going to change the color to black. I'm going to copy the selection box, and I'm going to paste it with Control shift v into the checkpoint. And I'm going to set the Adorni to the checkpoint. You don't have to change the color, because we're going to do that automatically in a script later. But next, I'm going to add another folder, and I'm going to name this Stages. I'm going to add a folder in here again, name it Stage 1. In Stage 1, I'm going to add a part into the folder. I'm going to make sure it's anchored. I'm going to set the material to smooth plastic, and I'm actually going to do that with both the checkpoint base and the checkpoint itself. Set them to, set them to smooth plastic. Then I'm going to drag the part. And I'm going to, I'm just going to keep it named part, then I'm going to resize it. I'm going to make it a bit longer. Then I'm going to drag it out two studs. Then I'm going to move it, drag it out three studs, move it up two. Drag it out three studs, move it up two. Drag it out three studs, move it up two. Then I'm going to change the colors of this. The first one's going to be bright red. The next one is going to be bright orange. And the next one's going to be bright yellow. And that one after that is going to be bright green. Then I'm going to close that folder because we don't need it anymore. I'm going, to I'm going to select the base plate and I'm going to use control. I'm going to hold control and I'm going to click on the checkpoint. So we have both selected. I'm going to use Control D to duplicate. I'm going to move them over. I'm going to move it out three studs and move it up two. Then I'm going to change the color of this checkpoint, but it doesn't matter. I'm just going to change it to not electric blue. I'm going to change it to bright blue. And then you, this is the important part. I'm going to rename the checkpoint to two. And back in the stages folder, I'm going to add another folder. Name it stage two. I'm going to add a part into it. And then I'm going to insert another folder. And I'm going to name this folder kill parts. I'm going to move this base part right here. I'm going to anchor it. Set it to smooth plastic. Change the color to institutional white. And I'm going to drag it out. I'm just going to drag it out. That looks good. Then I'm going to duplicate this part. I'm going to drag it into the kill parts folder. I'm going to change its color to bright red. And I'm going to change its material to neon. 
Then I'm going to resize it down to one stud in length. Then I'm going to move it one, two, three, four, five. Then I'm going to set my move to six. I'm going to duplicate this part. And then I'm just going to do this and move it over until it gets to the end. I'm going to change my move back to one stud. And I'm going to have I'm going to use another plugin. I will leave a link to this plugin down in the description. I will also leave reclass in the description. But this one is the tag editor. What you want to do is you're going to click on instance tagging. You're going to click tag window. On new tag, you're going to add a tag with the name kill part. And you're going to select all of these parts in the folder and s make sure that this is ticked. So they have that tag now. And we'll be able to use them later in a script. I'm just going to duplicate the checkpoint and the checkpoint base one more time. And I'm going to move it over. Change the name of this one to three. And change the color. I'm going to change it to plum because I like that purple color. And now we're going to start setting up some scripting. First thing we're going to do is just set up the main framework for the game. Get some basic code in there. I'm going to rename the script to main framework. And we're going to need two variables right now. We're going to need players and collection service. So local players equals game colon get service players. Then I'm going to get collection service. So local collection service equals game colon get service collection service. Now we're going to have two for loops. We're going to have a for loop for every single checkpoint that's in the game. And then we're going to have one for every kill part in that collection service returns. But what the first one we're going to write is for the checkpoints. So we're going to do for underscore because we don't need the index comma checkpoint. Then we're going to declare it as a base part by using colon base part. And this is useful so we can get those properties of a base part. And we're going to do in workspace colon wait for child checkpoints colon get children do. And we're going to do local r equals checkpoint dot color dot r divided by three. I'm going to copy this line. I'm going to paste it. I'm going to change it to local g equals checkpoint dot color dot g divided by three. Paste it again, change it to local b equals checkpoint.color.b divided by 3. Then I'm going to get the selection box and we're going to set the color of it. So checkpoint colon find first child selection box dot color 3 equals color 3 dot new r comma g comma b. Then we're going to do checkpoint dot touched colon connect function hit we will finish this function when we set up profile service in a little bit but outside of this for loop then we're going to get all of the kill parts so for underscore comma kill part colon base part in collection service colon get tagged kill part do so collection service is going to get every single object in the game that has the tag kill part and it will put all of it into a table and return that table for us. So what we're going to do is if you accidentally add the tag to anything that isn't a base part, we're just going to check if it is a base part. So if kill part colon is a base part, then kill part dot touched colon connect function hit then we're going to hit enter after we close that function. And we're going to get the character. So local character equals hit dot parent. Then we're going to get a humanoid. So local humanoid equals character colon find first child humanoid. That we're going to do is check if the character and the humanoid exist. Because if the character exists, it's just the parent of what hit. It's just the parent of what triggered the touched event. So then we're getting the humanoid, but it might not exist because it might not be a player. So we're going to do 
if character, so if the character exists, and humanoid, so if that character has a humanoid, then humanoid.health equals zero, and that will kill the player who touches it. Now we can start setting up profile service to start loading and saving data. In service script service, I'm going to add a folder, and I'm going to name this modules. And in that folder, I'm going to add a module script, and I'm going to rename this to data manager. The first thing I'm going to do is rename local module to local data manager. And then we're going to change return module to return data manager. And just below where it defines data manager as a table, we're going to do data manager dot profiles equals a blank table. Inside of the data manager module script, we're going to add another module script. This one is going to be renamed to template. Then in the script, I'm going to change local module to local template and return template. And in these two curly brackets, I'm going to drop a line. And then in this table, I'm going to set stage equals one comma to separate it from the next value. Drop a line rebirths equals zero comma to separate it from the next line if we ever add any more data. Then in the data manager script, we're going to add another module script. This one is going to be called leader stats. I'm not going to rename the module in the code. I'm just going to write a quick function to create leader stats for the player. So we're going to do function module colon create. This is going to take a player object and we're going to declare it as a player by doing colon player. And then we're going to do comma profile because it's going to take their profile. And we're going to create the leader stats by doing local leader stats equals instance.new folder. Then we're going to do leader stats dot name equals leader stats. And it's important that the L is lowercase, otherwise it's not going to show up on the leaderboard. Then we're going to do leader stats dot parent equals player. Then we're going to create a stage value, which is going to be an int value. So we're going to do local stage equals instance dot new int value stage dot name equals stage stage dot value equals profile dot data dot stage. Then we're going to create a reverse int value. So I'm just going to copy the stage int value and I'm going to change it from local stage to local rebirths. And I'm going to change it to rebirths.name and rebirths.value. I'm going to change name to rebirths, make that capital. And then this is going to be profile.data.rebirths. So we're now done with those two modules. I'm going to insert the profile service module script. I will leave a link to that in the description. You're just going to insert it from the toolbox in, under your, my models. So now that profile service is inserted in the workspace, I'm going to drag it into the modules folder inside of server script service. At the top of this little script, I'm going to get the players. So local players equals game colon get service players. Then I'm going to get the modules. So local modules equals script dot parent. We're going to get that modules folder. Then we're going to get profile service, the template module and the leader sets module. So local profile service equals require modules colon wait for a child profile service. Then we're going to do local template equals require script colon wait for a child template. Then we're going to get the leader stats module. So local leader stats equals require script colon wait for child leader stats. Now we need two more variables. We need a data key, which is a string. I'm going to set local data key equals two quotation marks underscore test data store. This is going to be our one for testing. And when you finish this game, you're going to change this key to just underscore data store. And you are not going to change the data key. If you change the data key, everyone's data will get wiped. So we're going to do local profile store equals profile service dot get profile store data key. And then we're going to pass the template and we don't want any of this to save right now. So at the end of get profile store, I'm going to put dot mock 
which is going to set up fake data that won't save. Now we need two functions. We need one for player added and player removing, both of which are fairly simple. First one we're going to write is player added, so local function player added. This takes a player object, so player colon player. And we're going to do local local profile equals profile store colon load profile async. Then we're going to do into quotation marks player underscore outside of the quotation marks dot dot player dot user ID. Then we're going to check if profile is not equal to nil, then profile colon add user ID player dot user ID. Then we're going to call profile colon reconcile, which is a function on profiles and profile service. If there's any missing data, like if you were to add gems and people have saved data before gems existed, Reconcile will add the gems to their new saved data. And we're going to do profile colon listen to release function. And then we're going to do data manager dot profiles open square bracket player close square bracket equals nil player colon kick. Outside of listen to release, we're going to do if player colon is descendant of players, then data manager dot profiles open square bracket player close square bracket equals profile. And then we're going to do leader stats colon create. Then we're going to pass the player and profile. Then we're going to do else profile colon release. And then outside of the if player colon is descendant of. We're going to drop a line, do else player colon kick. Now outside of the player added function, we're going to create our player removing function, which is way more simple. We're going to do local function player removing. This takes the player, so player colon player. Then we're going to do local profile equals data manager dot profiles open square bracket player close square bracket. If profile is not equal to nil, then profile colon release. Then outside of that function, we're going to do for underscore because we don't need the index comma player. Then outside of the player removing function, we're going to do for underscore because we don't need the index comma player in players colon get players do task dot spawn player added comma player then outside of this for loop we're going to do players dot player added colon connect player added then we're going to do players dot player removing colon connect player removing and now we're done with that that is our profile service code complete now we can finish this checkpoint dot touched connection we're going to do Local character equals hit dot parent local humanoid equals character colon wait for child humanoid. Then we're going to do if character and humanoid then then we're going to do local player equals players colon get player from character character if player then if player colon has tag rebirth underscore processing, you'll understand what this does in episode three. Then return end local profile equals data manager. Oh, I forgot to get the data manager at the top of the script underneath collection service. We're going to do local data manager equals require script dot parent colon wait for child modules colon wait for child data manager then we're going to do local profile equals data manager dot profiles open square bracket player close square bracket if not profile then return end so we're not even going to do anything if the profile is nil local number equals to number checkpoint dot name if number 
is less than or equal to profile dot data dot stage then return else profile dot data dot stage equals number player dot leader stats dot stage dot value equals profile dot data dot stage. Now we're going to write a couple more functions above this. We're going to need two functions and then we're going to need a player added event. We're going to need a function, so local function get checkpoint position profile for underscore comma checkpoint in workspace colon wait for child checkpoints colon get children do local number equals to number checkpoint dot name if number equals equals profile if number equals equals profile dot data dot stage then return checkpoint then we're going to make another function local function teleport to player this is going to take a player object so player colon player then this also takes their profile so we're going to do profile in this function we're going to get the character so local character equals player dot character or player dot character added colon wait local current checkpoint equals get checkpoint position profile we're going to do local new pause equals current checkpoint dot position plus vector three dot new zero comma five comma zero then we're going to do local cf equals c frame dot new new pause then we're going to do character dot primary part on pivot to cf outside of this function we're going to do players dot player added colon connect function this takes the player then we're going to do local profile and since it takes a very small amount of time to load we're going to use a repeat until loop until it exists just so we can make sure that they get spawned incorrectly so we're going to do repeat task dot wait 0 0.1 Profile equals data manager dot profiles open square bracket player close square bracket until profile is not equal to nil. Then we're going to use the teleport to player function and we're going to pass the player and profile. And I just realized that this function is named incorrectly, but it should be named teleport to checkpoint. I'm going to copy this and we're calling this immediately as soon as the player joins since the player added event. I'm not sure if it's a bug, but it's been a little bit weird and it doesn't spawn incorrectly the first time the player joins the game. So we're just going to teleport them to their checkpoint immediately as soon as they join the game. Then we're going to do player dot character added colon connect function. We're going to do if not profile, then return end. So what this is going to do is it's going to return and not do anything with the profile, but it's useful because then we don't have to check if the profile is equal to nil or not in either of these two functions, because this function won't run unless the profile is not equal to nil. Then we're going to do task.wait 0.2, so we're going to wait a very small fraction of a second, and then we're going to teleport the player to checkpoint. This takes player, comma, profile. And we're going to add another script in the server script service. This one is very easy. We're just going to rename this to data framework. The reason we're doing this is because the data manager requires a server script for it to run and by requiring it. So we're going to do require script dot parent colon wait for child modules colon wait for child data manager. And now that we have that set up, we can play test this. The data is not going to save since I'm using dot mock at the end. There seems to be a bug with the leader stats, but I think I know what the issue is. Yep, that's the issue. 
I forgot to set the parent of both these values. So we're going to do stage dot parent equals leader stats. And then we're going to do reavers dot parent equals leader stats. Now if I play test this again, it should hopefully work. You can see I'm at stage one. And I spawn at stage one. And now if I go to stage two, it'll change to stage two. If I run over the kill part, it'll kill my character. I'll respawn at stage two. And if I complete this, then I'm on stage three. Well, that is episode one of how to make an obby completed. I hope you found this tutorial useful, and I hope to see you in my next tutorial. Goodbye. What?